Hi, I'm Melissa Mirror. Welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. This is project number three in the Alan Revere Professional Jewelry Making Series. Today we are making the hoop earrings. Now this project is a lot of fun, but don't get discouraged if you have a difficult time with it. Forming these earrings in a synclastic manner, which is where we have kind of a cupping shape, so it all curves around like this, can actually be a little bit difficult when you are trying to get the curve to come around this way, but also this way. So you might have to play around with this a little bit and fiddle with it, but as you do this more, then it's going to make more sense. Now the tools that we are using are very, very simple. So I will show you those as we go along just because there are a number of them. So let's just jump right in and see how to do these earrings. The first thing I need to do is follow his pattern to create our earrings. Now because I knew I was going to be doing these quite a bit or making multiple pairs whether for the video or whatever else the case might be, I decided I would do a template. So this is actually 20 gauge that I did this. But the steps that I did are going to be similar to what you can do uh, on your earrings if you decide you only want to do one. So the first thing I did, you can see here, I've got some tracing paper and I just traced out my design, cut that out roughly, not, not right along the edges, but then I glued that onto my template. I cut out the template with my jeweler saw, filed everything, and got it how I needed it to be. So now I have this template and I can use this to mark my metal. Now the first pair of earrings that you can see here, I did in what's called new gold. It's basically a jeweler's brass. It's a little, it's a red brass, which is a little softer. What we are going to be doing is you want to use metal that is 0.4 millimeters thick. So if we get this, here we go. I'm just about 0.4, I'm just shy. And that's really because I rolled this down as I was doing the roll printed pattern. So I may lose some of this texture as we are doing the forming process, but that's okay. I believe that I've got a deep enough impression on here that the majority of this will stay. So the next thing I'm going to do is trace my template onto my piece so that I can get this cut out. So I just laid my template on here. I'm going to use a scribe and mark where I need to cut on these earrings. I don't know if you can see that or not. It, I think it shows up fairly decent on the video. But now you can kind of see my line and that's going to give me my guide. I'm going to do it one more time because I want a pair of earrings and not just one. So now I have my two pieces outlined and I'm ready to now cut that. I just use a pair of metal shears. This one happens to be a Joyce Chen, but there are a number of shears that are out there that you can use. I do not want to cut directly on that line, but I mean, you can always try. Uh, the reason I don't want to cut right on that line is I may have the tendency to bump in and I definitely don't want to be too small. I'd much rather be too large and file this away. Once you have the one ready, you want to follow suit and repeat on the other piece. So next thing I'm going to do is set my caliper to two and a half millimeters. I want to create the spot where I am going to create my divot here where my ear wire will go through. So we should be about five millimeters from side to side right here. And by going two and a half millimeters, we'll go two and a half millimeters from the end and two and a half millimeters from the side and X marks your spot. And what I'm going to do is take my center punch. Now in this case, this is a spring loaded center punch. So I'm just going to place my center punch right there in the crosshair. I push down and it's going to give me my divot. I will do that same thing on the opposite end. And 
and repeat for the other earring. Now that my two earring blanks are ready, I need to anneal these and we will begin our forming process. Now the question often comes up, how do I know if my metal is annealed? There's a number of ways that you can do this. Once you really get into your metal smithing, then you'll start to see the difference, the changes that happen with your metal. Another little quick cheat is you can just take some Sharpie and draw a little line on those. And when this Sharpie mark disappears, you're at the annealing temperature. This also works on copper as well. So that's one little trick. But like I said, as you get working with this, you'll start to recognize the differences in your metal and how it looks. Now this is going to take very little heat because we are only 0.4 millimeters, which is about 26 gauge. So it's not going to take a whole lot of heat here. So it'll be kind of fast. Now I'm watching that Sharpie mark disappear and that piece is done. And now our second piece is done. If you were in an area that didn't have as bright of light, you would see ever so slight of a little red tinge. But because my lights are so bright with all the cameras and everything, you're not going to see that in here. But you'll notice that that Sharpie mark is now gone. I'm going to quench this, and our metal is much softer and much more pliable. So now I have my pieces. They are not pickled, as you can see, but they are annealed. Now, when I did the divot and the marks on those, I did those on the outside of the earring, so the side that faces up and out. However, when I form this, I'm actually going to form from the inside. So I'm going to be working with my hammer with the, the pattern down in this case. Now, as far as my hammer, you can use any number of hammers, but the, the dome that's in your hammer is going to determine the curvature that you get on the inside of your piece and how well it flows around as well. This happens to be the large embossing hammer from Fretz. It's got a beautiful polish on the heads themselves and I have two different sizes. I may actually start with one size and work down to another but we'll just kind of see how that goes. In Alan's book, he gives a number of different materials that you can use to forge into or form into a hammer into. And I tried a number of them. I did not have the felt pad that he had. He described it as um, like a thick felt buff that you would have for your flex shaft. I did not have any of those or for your polishing arbor. I did not have that. But I did have a thick magazine, and while it did work, there was not exactly a lot of give to that. And I, I found that it took a lot more effort to get my desired results. So I went back to a product that I've used many, many times, and I have in abundance from building my studio, is the cutoff end of a 2x4. And so that's what you are going to see me using here in this video. So here you can see that I've got my 2x4, I've put it into a vise. I've actually already created a divot because I guess I was forming some other project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ball end of this embossing hammer to create kind of an oval type of divot into this block. So now that I have that, it does not have to be big, it doesn't have to be wide, but I do want it to be fairly even and somewhat symmetrical. I'm off a little bit, but it's not a big deal. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to be moving my metal over this divot as I hammer down. Now I will do a little bit of hammer movements, but they're not going to be many. And what I want is I actually want this this uh, earring to not come around and meet itself, but kind of to bypass itself. And that way then I can actually come in and continue to hammer, and then afterwards I will twist it closed, which may deform some of it, and that's when we have to go back and make a few adjustments. 
Now I'm going to start off with the large end of this hammer right here and we will start from there. So what I'm going to do is ever so gently just hammer and guide this metal until I see this curve forming. And you can see not only is it curving this way, but we're also curving this way. So I'm creating kind of a scoop. And you'll also see that it's kind of curving off to the side a little bit. For now, that's desirable. Later, it won't necessarily be. But what I want to do is just keep my hammer going up and down and moving my metal into this divot. And if I look here on the back side, I still have my texture. So I'm not really hammering a lot of that out. Things are smooth and they're curving beautifully and that's what I want to see. Okay, I'm just a little bit beyond the halfway point. I'm going to point out a couple of things. Right now there's a little flat spot or kind of a weird ripple right here. And that's something that I can easily go back and adjust when I've got this formed a little bit more. Uh, I do have a good curve going right here. So this is kind of what I want to see. You can start to see that earring taking form at this point. I'm going to turn this over and continue from the opposite end again, or I could even continue from here going this way. So now we have the entire earring that has a good curve to it. I'm going to straighten this out just a little bit by twisting it. And what's going to happen is you can see that it kind of deforms some of this out here on this outer edge, like I might end up with a ripple or whatever. Now this is where it gets kind of fun and somewhat difficult because my hammer needs to be inside in order for me to create this curve. But as this closes, then I run out of room for my hammer to be in there. So a lot of times what will happen is I will tilt my, my earring forward and I will work on the outside curve here as much as possible and then I'll turn it around and do the same thing on the opposite side because I need to close this and bring it back around. And here I'm actually going to switch to the smaller head on my embossing hammer as well. So you can see here, I've tightened up this side a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that or not on the video, but we still have quite the open curve at this point in time. To have this where it is nice and round and you can see that I'm not really round quite yet I have some divots in here that need to be adjusted and the other thing too is I want to have this overlap probably by about 10 millimeters so I have a little ways to go and some of this can be done by hand where especially like this tightening part to, to get that overlap but I still need to come back in and address these little problem issues that are in here. And part of this can be done by going in through the opposite side and hammering up along the edge of this little groove that I have created in my block. And 
And hopefully you can see this, this smooth this out quite a bit. There's still a little bit of a bump right here that I need to address and kind of an indent right here. But that is something that's kind of coming. starting to get there better. I pushed this closed and it created kind of a little tight spot right here. So again, another little area that I need to come in and address and just smooth that out. And I'll continue to do that. So this side, I have a little bit of work here to do now, but this side is now actually pretty round. And I will turn it over and do the other side. Once I have this one done, then I will pull the other earring in and do it as well. And now I have two matched pair of earrings and we're ready for the next step. Once we have all of the forming done, then it's time to get our holes drilled and our ear wire soldered into place. So we have a couple more steps left and that's what we're going to do now. These have been pickled, but they've not yet been polished or cleaned up. So they don't look quite like the bright silver that I'm after quite yet. We have this overlap right now, which is what we wanted for sure. And now what we need to do is drill holes into these little pilot divots that we have created earlier. To do this, I want to pick a drill bit, and these things are tiny. There we go. I want to pick a drill bit that is about the same size as my 20 gauge wire. I'd much rather have my drill bit be a little smaller than my wire than bigger, because if it's bigger, you're going to have a difficult time getting it soldered into place. So in this case, my wire is 0 0.79, 0 0.8, and that gives me a 20 gauge wire. And I want my drill bit to be approximately the same. So if I open this up, and here I am at, uh, between 0.78 and 0.76. So I think that that's going to serve us well for this portion. What I want to do is install my drill bit into my number 30 handpiece. It's the one with the Jacobs check that will close all the way. Anytime you were doing any kind of drilling or anything like that, safety first. Make sure you've got on safety gear and then you can get to work. First things first, I'm going to lubricate my drill bit just a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm going to be working right here on my bench or this little block that I used to create my divot. The reason that I like this is that what I can do is I can come in and position my earring so that it just sits over the edge there. It's not going to take much effort to go through this, especially since I created a divot in a very, very thin piece of metal to begin with. You can test your fit by taking that 20 gauge wire and putting it through. So this fits well. It's a little bit loose, but it's not so loose that it's going to be detrimental to me when I go to solder this. So now I need to re uh, repeat this process with my other earring. Now that I have the two holes in here, I need to mark where I'm going to bend these two ends. I'm going to take my dividers and I'm going to set it to be five millimeters. Now if you recall, when we did these holes, we put them at two and a half millimeters. And what I'm going to do now is just come a little bit beyond that and we're just going to drag the dividers across to give us 
that five millimeter line. And I will turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing. So again, I rest one end of the divider, one leg of the divider along the edge and then I score my line there. Using a pair of flat nose pliers, I'm going to take the very end of this right up to that line, try to keep it centered as much as I can, and I'm going to put in a 90 degree bend. And I'm going to repeat on the other end. Make any adjustments that you need. We definitely want this to be more at a 90 degree so that both ends come down and meet up. And now I'm going to repeat for the other ear wire or the other earring. So our two earrings should now look like this. What we are going to do now is we're going to take our wire and we're going to insert it through one of the ends and we are going to solder it into place. What I have here now is a 20 gauge wire that's approximately 30 millimeters long. I only need about half of that for each of these earrings. So what I'm going to do is take that and cut it at about the 15 millimeter mark. And that is going to give me plenty for each of these ear earrings. Now to set this up, what I'm going to do is you can see that I've inserted the wire through both, both ends. However, if you'll notice, right here it's much smaller and this is going to be the terminated end of that, that ear post. And then this portion here, the longer portion, will be the portion that goes through our ear. What I'm going to do is give this a little bit of flux and then I'm going to dry it just ever so slightly with my torch. By doing that, I ensure that my solder doesn't bounce around out of there. And that would be undesirable for sure, to have my solder bounce out. So I'm going to just place my little chip of solder right next to that little pie, or the little ear wire that's sticking up right there. And I don't need a lot of heat for this, so I'm just using a smaller butane torch but what I'm going to do is heat the outside of my earring and then I'll come in and touch where the ear wire is. Again, heat up around the outside, come back in and touch where the ear wire is. And I just want to ensure that I don't overheat down in this area or anything like that. Concentrate here a little bit and our solder began to flow and there it's gone and I'm happy with that join. So I will take this now and place it into my quench. And I just wanna ensure that it actually soldered into place, which it looks like it did. So we are good to go and I'll place this into the pickle. And now I just need to replace or repeat those steps for the second earring. I haven't let these pickle quite long enough, but it's okay for the demonstration purposes for right now. First thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that the gap between the earrings are where we want them to be at about six millimeters. I also can see that the kind of the, the bend on them isn't quite the same. I want them more of a 90 degree. So I can adjust that here. I'm also going to clip these little ends that we just soldered on and I need to shorten each of the ear wires, round those off so that they are easier to fit or to wear anyway. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this little bend here on this earring. There we go, that's looking a lot better right there. And this one looks pretty decent as well. Maybe a little bit of an adjustment. And that's how you really do these, is you just kind of look at things and see where things need to be adjusted and you make those adjustments. So then the next thing that needs to happen is I need to trim off these ends inside of this. Make that much more flush. Okay. 
Then using a needle file, I can get into this and smooth that down so that we don't have any rough edges here. That's much better. So the next thing that I need to do is I want to verify that I have about a six millimeter opening. In this case, if I adjust this little bend again, I think we should just be about there. Okay, that one is six millimeters. So all that's really left for me to do on these then is to shorten these ear wires. It's a little bit too long, like I can't pull that and have it come out. So I need to shorten this. I want this ear wire to come a little bit beyond by a couple of millimeters. Uh, this post holder here, I guess we could call that. And this way I can pull it out but I actually have to make an effort to pull it out and when it goes back to rest it automatically rests in beyond where the hole is to hold that. So I'm going to repeat that process over here. And this one seems to be, it's a little bit wonky so I can see that there's kind of a dip or a curve to this. What I'm going to do anyway is pull this out. We want to harden these ear wires and to do that I'm going to pull it out and then I'm just going to give a couple of twists and that's going to do two things for me. It's going to straighten that wire out a bit and it's also going to give that wire some strength. Okay, and make it a little bit harder because if you remember, right now we currently have dead soft wire. So one twist and two twists. Doesn't have to be much. All right, and that one is having a hard time going in because I did not get it back to being straight. In addition to that, I also have that trimmed edge right here. Now there's a couple of ways that you can deal with these trimmed edges. One little tool has a cut burr, it's called a wire rounder, and it has a cut burr on the end, mounted on the end, and you just place it onto the end of your wire, and you can twist this. And it will cut and smooth those wire ends so that it's round. And then it becomes much more comfortable to wear. These are kind of nice, but they do take a little bit of time. You also have cut burrs that you can just insert into your flex shaft much, much faster. Or you can take a needle file and you can just kind of work those edges. I find this method to be a little bit difficult with this pair of earrings just because we already have the wire for or the earring formed and it gets in the way. So you have a couple of options. You just want to make sure that whatever you do, you take those sharp edges off. Otherwise, we end up with what I call lethal jewelry, and nobody likes lethal jewelry. All right, those are now done. So all we have left is to finish the polish. To finish these earrings off, you can do any number of finishes, and that is going to be entirely up to you. Whether you do like a satin finish, a matte finish, a high polished finish, and you can use any number of different abrasives to get that finish. In my case, I'm just going to use a number of the accessories that are uh, used with the flex shaft. But again, you could use polishing arbors, you can use sandpaper, sanding buffs, whatever works for you. And that is all we have. So as always, if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and mark those notifications so that you're notified whenever I do a new video. I do try to put out one a week, and right now with the projects, we've got a lot to talk about. As always, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section. I love to hear your feedback, even when it's not always so favorable. But how can I get better if I don't know? So I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching.